Welcome to the final scoop. My name is Robert Chinesky, the supplement engineer. Joining me is my international panel of experts in Robert Samborski of Apollo Nutrition, Lucas Rakowski, Prometheus Intelligent Sports Technology, TJ Gonan, Fitness Deal News, and the ghost man in the chair, uh, the founder, owner of Stack 3D. I'm going to see how long I can draw this out until Shane's ass is back in his chair. Shane Smith, ladies and gentlemen. I think he went off the on hands the for a ring. Beautiful. He, he fell asleep. <laughs> So, my friends, we are back here yet again. This is our seventh official episode of the Final Scoop, and not counting the two uh, Quarantine Avengers episodes that we were called uh, we uh, recorded some time back. Uh, how is everyone doing? Lucky seven. Oh, there we go. Doing? Shane showing yes. up with it, the white monster. So, it's Shane, awesome. most of the time we've seen you with the green monster. Is there? Do you have a preferred flavor, or is it just whatever's in stock, whatever you can get your hands on? The purple. I like the purple, but we can't get that here, so. Oh, oh, is, that, the is, there, is there some kind of, like, profiling or, or prejudice against purple down there in New Zealand? No, nah, I think we just, um, we only get, like, most most countries get different flavors. Yeah. America's got, like, what, fucking eight? Yeah. Um, yeah, we got white, orange, and green, which, orange is shit. Um, I like the green one. The green one's all right. The white one's yeah, all right. Like but you got I, the blue. Do you get the blue one, maybe? No, so the originals were the red and blue and the the white, but we only we bypassed the original red and blue and got a uh, green and orange. I guess maybe they thought we liked them. I don't know. Interesting. All right, so as we've been doing with each of these uh, podcasts as of late, we're doing a, a get to know you segment, and we've covered everybody on the panel except Mr. Shane. So Shane, oh, you get to be the uh, the star man, and, and for the, the listeners out there that are that might be new to this, uh, it is uh, six o'clock New Zealand time Sunday morning when Shane is joining us. So if he, if he's going to be a little groggy, you know, if he no. misses something or, or no, mispronounces no, no. something, you know, he's it's it's. He's got a little bit of an excuse. So, uh, Shane, give us a little bit of a background, you know, some a brief history on the uh, the founding of Stack 3D and, uh, you know, a little bit about your athletic background. Uh, I mean, I don't know where to start. Um, I mean, I was originally a, uh, a competitive swimmer for about 15 years. Um, Sumo, you said? Swimmer. Competitive. I was uh, I was I was the odd one. I didn't do the butterfly or the bridge, the freestyle or the backstroke. I was a breaststroker, so we we had to be a little more more powerful in the legs uh, than others. And um, that kind of when I turned about eighteen, nineteen, that eventually led to the gym. You know, you're always looking for better ways to get faster and and, and um, stronger, and that led to the gym. And uh, at the gym, they had posters for supplements and i had no idea what the fuck they were so um you know they i went down to the uh the protein store and it was uh it was must it was a, a very few brands back then uh, muscle tech was one of them and what year is like, it just for reference was, what year is it ooh 2008 2009 um yeah i went to and I went into the uh, store and I was like, I mean, I didn't know protein because it was nitro tech. And I was like, that's expensive as hell. Like, I think two pounds was, in New Zealand, it was like really, really expensive. It was about two pounds for maybe, I don't know, 60 US, 50 US, thereabouts. Damn. Um, and then when I went to the gym, um, I saw gold standard. And so I was like, well, and then I looked it online and I'm like, dude, gold standards everywhere. And so straight away I was like, and this was uh, like a few bucks more and you got a five pound. So I was like, well, screw that. So we grabbed gold standard. If I remember correctly, there were three flavors. I grabbed chocolate, of course. Um, and then pretty much that was, that was it. It was like, I saw the gains shoot through the roof. Obviously, you know, I was, I was, I had only just started, of course, I had only just started the gym and uh, I had started the gym moderately, but I, 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 I mean, I can't, I, this, the, the protein powder helped. I cannot deny that, like, you know, shit went through the roof, but I think it was partly because the product and, like, you know, it just it told you how to get protein in, it taught you very quickly what to eat. And that affected it because um, proteins, you know, it's technically just just food, nutrition. 
and then you I learned pretty quickly. Um, you know, I went to the creatine, then I went to glutamine, then I went, went back to just creatine, and then um, wait, you know, was this micro encapsulated glutamine? Because that's that's the advanced shit that you need to be using. This is two thousand nine, man. This was two thousand nine. And I remember it was the, macro, macro encapsulated and it still did shit. So <laughs> this was this was like way, way back and um this was like early days when uh I, I believed that if I didn't get the results, that it was me, that I was not trying hard enough, I was not training hard enough. And I'm like, this thing says I'm gonna gain muscle and it didn't. So I'm like, I gotta train harder, I gotta train like more intense. This was before pre-workouts. I didn't come across pre-workouts until jacked like four or five years later or something. Um, and so I was just like, shit. And then eventually I stumbled across my friend who was a distributor in the country. And uh, he hooked me up with some supplements and brands that I hadn't heard of. I stumbled across bodybuilding.com. Um and being that I had seen muscle tech very early, they used to put up posters of the new products that were coming. And when I go look them up, I couldn't find shit. And so I don't really know what gave me the idea, but I was like, I should make a blog. And I was actually doing an online store at the time. And the blog was attached to the online store. And the big thing back then was um, uh, blogs just 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 blog for your store and I was like oh, okay so I did and I was like what the fuck do I do about it and I was like I'll just do it on new products things I couldn't find on the internet and at that time muscle tech optimum expiry they were pumping out new shit pretty quickly um this was about the time muscle tech was doing anabolic halo um I'm trying to remember nano vapor was coming out so they were doing one of the only brands doing like regular heat, I mean, sorry, uh, like hype stuff, like just excitement. And I noticed within about a few weeks, months, that no one from New Zealand was reading the website. It was entirely American. So I was like, okay. So I pretty much that night, I was like, fuck it, I got nothing else to do. So I rebranded the whole blog, separated it, turned it into sect, um, changed the time zone the spelling the writing the wording um and then just started looking for american brands and at that time there weren't that many but um i mean there were a lot but you know, nothing compared to now and then um you know when was that I, thing like uh, what what year are we at now i started the, the store maybe 2009 so maybe like within the year i started taking supplements uh then I started the blog in 2010. Oh no, I turned it into stacked in 2010. Um oh, wow. maybe 2011. Oh, it's been 10 years for stacked? It's been a while. Wow. But you won't remember because back in the day it was horse shit. I used to just share things and not read them. It wasn't until like 2012 that I actually was like, I would be like, you know what, maybe I should proofread because I remember Googling like things to make your writing better. And it said, always oh, proofread. And I was like, shit, I hate proofreading. So I went back <laughs> and I started reading through like each post and I was like, oh my God, like I had so many errors. And so then I went back and read the ones that I had shared and I was like, okay, let's just delete all this original stuff. <laughs> well. <laughs> And then I started uh, proofreading and uh, getting a little better, getting a little more consistent. And um, yeah, it's just been the same process since maybe 2013, 14. I started kind of taking it seriously. I don't think we got, we didn't start doing advertising until 14 or 15. We just had, I think I mentioned it to other people, but just someone hit me up because I put a banner on the site. Um, someone asked me and they said, I just put a banner because I wanted to promote, uh, I think it was, I can't even remember the stuff now. Someone had a banner on their website and I was like, you know what? I should just put that on mine and it'll make it look like, <laughs> like cool. I'm pretty sure it was mutant if I remember correctly. And then literally, um, maybe 
a couple of months later, someone was like, hey, how much are they paying for that? And so I go, oh, nothing. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not a businessman. <laughs> and then they said, I'll give you uh, 400 bucks for the month. And I was like, okay, sweet. And then someone said, how much are they paying? And I was like, 400 bucks. And they said, I'll give you 600. I was like, I could just put up <laughs> another one. And they said, okay. And then I was like, this is pretty cool. And then someone said to me, do you have a rate card? And I was like, Googled what the fuck a rate card was. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and I ended up getting uh, Google it. And it's like, you know, run down of everything you sell. And I was like, well, I've only got fucking two spaces. And so then I decided to make a couple more. And then, uh, yeah, I think we got a few. But it was crazy because if you tell someone something for free, they don't want it. Right, you said something for hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, but whatever. But if you give them the same thing for like four hundred, five hundred dollars, people will be like, "Oh wow, that must be worth it." It's really weird. And then when I sent it out to the people I knew, um, yeah, that was it. It's pretty much so we're all in the same train since. Shane, how did you come up with the name? And what like were I you said, doing uh, for like between 2010 and 2014, 15 when you started generating oh revenue God. from the site? Like, was what were you like uh, blowing, just, blowing dick for money or like? Uh... <laughs> I went the hard way, man. I went the I went the hard way. I was uh, so 2008, 2009. I was uh, at college, um, and then. Pretty much 2013, 14 was when I finished. In that time, this is gonna sound it's gonna sound crazy. So I was doing um, I did extra work on the uh, on TV shows. I did work on that uh, show Spartacus. Um, I was the dead work dude. As, as the what? What were you uh, on on Spartacus? Yeah. You know, the, so what? You know, you, you were oh. acting, or what were you doing? <laughs> when we signed up, it was like, are you athletic? Do you want to make 500 bucks a day? I was like, fuck yeah. So <laughs> I went up. The worst part was the first time I went in, they were like, hey, you look like one of the lead roles. And I was like, I don't think so, but whatever. And they said, can we, can like, are you interested in nude? And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> and they were just, I was like, because like, if you did, half nude it was like a grand a day if it was like full nude it was like two g's i was like holy shit anyway i didn't but um basically i was the dead dude so they would just like make you stand in the background or be dead and i didn't i, I didn't volunteer for a lot i didn't want to do any acting because then it involves so much more work and you have to wake up earlier and all this shit and i was like nah bro right so um i did that I was a courier driver, so like a delivery driver for uh, my mom, my mom's uh, mom and dad's company. I did retail work, which is um, you know the stands that you have in like Walmart for yeah. like uh, certain companies. I yeah. would prepare those in certain regions around the city for like a telephone company, uh, and then I also worked for a telephone company as a retail retail salesman for like mobile phones. And yeah. I think that was it, actually. So I had about four jobs at the time. That's interesting. Um, and then as uh, Stack got better, um, I dropped things off. I dropped the uh, I dropped the courier work, and then I, I dropped the, the extra work, as fun as that was. Um, and then, yeah, I think I, the, the last job I dropped was in retail, and then... Um, Pretty much that was about 2013, 14. I was at the Arnold and I caught, caught on my boss and I was like, hey, man, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to come back. Can we just... And they were like, yeah, okay. We'll just... So I was like, fuck it. We'll just see how this goes. And it, and it seemed to go pretty good. Um, so it's about 2014. Yeah, 2013, 14, I think. It got pretty much just full on from there. Just... Shit happens, and it just just right. went with the went with yeah. the role. That's amazing. And how did the name uh, come up? Like uh, stack. Oh, the name. Yeah, like I told you, in 2010, 11, Um, yeah, I was just like nobody from New Zealand following the fucking site. This is bullshit. And so I um, 
I was like, it's just, I mean, make it American kind of thing. And um, I tried to come up with a name. And at the time, I was fascinated with stacks, right? Like, I was just taking protein creatine. And when I found out you could stack this shit, like you could use this shit together and get like a full blown, like muscle building stack. I was like, hell yeah. And then I was like, we should just call it stack. I literally thought about this in about five minutes. Came up to me in just like five minutes. I was like, let's just call it like stack. And the sure as shit stack was taken. And then I went to um, uh, stacked. I was like, stacked. Yeah, it was that's like jacked. And then I typed stacked. It was taken. And I was like, we'll just try <laughs> three. And then there was there three. So there within about go. an hour, the store became stack.com. I would have, it would be with an E if it was available, to be honest, but they wanted to yeah. charge me 30 grand, I think. Oh, it's, nah, bro, it's not really worth it right now. That's awesome. I think the three worked. The logo, yeah, I mean, that was before uh, Jacked, right? Like the uh, pre workout. I actually think this was around the time. I thought, whatever but it's it was. It's not that's... related, right? It's not like it you is. said, hey, oh, it is. Okay. okay. That's why I put the three in there. Oh, okay, got it. I was like, what the fuck do I... I was so mad because I wanted stacked with the ED. I was like, oh, I was yeah. stumped for maybe five minutes. I took a piss and I was like, fuck it. Let's just put a three in there like this guy's did. Because yeah. I was like, man, that's the perfect name. That's just so really, so good. And then I just ran with it. The original logo, if you've ever seen it, was absolutely fucking hideous. Really? But... Um, Find it. Because it was made out of boxes. Like I made it, like it's the exact same thing now without the diagonal lines. So when I made that for logo, I was like, this is the best. It's boxes stacked on top of one another. And I thought I was a genius. And now I look <laughs> back at it and I think it's fucking hideous. But um, <laughs> so it's pretty much the same logo now, but with like, angles to make it actually look normal. But um, yeah, that's a. Uh, that's pretty much it, I think. That's awesome. Fantastic, man. That's Stumbling awesome. your way to success. I like it. It's kind of pretty how much. I described my whole uh, venture into the into this industry. And I think a lot of people... Actually, say, I forgot to mention, I did also sell... I was also a frozen food distributor in, the, in, in that I did. Um, me and my brother drove a truck and we distributed frozen pies and ice cream. Sorry, I should have added that one. <laughs> You, you yeah. get all over the map, dude. This was the That's last awesome. thing I thought I was going to do. <laughs> That's awesome. So, okay, so your your parents run their own business, and then you've you've got all these other side gigs, and you start up your you start up stacked. Uh, stacked was, uh, yeah, it was it was like, and I would usually do it like back in the ten. I would do it like half an hour to an hour a day. I would do it at 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 night. I would write. Maybe one or two stories for the week, mm-hmm. and, and then I would add to it if I could find more, and that was it. What did your parents say? Or I mean, I don't know how close your relationship is with your parents or your brother or your family, siblings, whatever. When you said, "I'm not going to go the conventional route. I'm not going to work in the family business. I'm not going to do these other side things. I'm just going to write about supplements for the rest of my life." Well, so see, how did that go over? So, well, because at the time, at 2000, pretty much when I started the gym, and this might sound a bit sad, but I have to add this because this is part of the story, uh, 2008 or nine. So uh, we were going, we started the gym and maybe like, I can't remember, it was early eight or 2009, somewhere around there. And then um, we had, this was before my first supplement, um, and my dad was meant to be booked in to go to the gym with me, my mom. And then uh, he actually passed away uh, in 2008 and nine. And he was the one that started the courier business. And he started it, Jesus, 90s? Oh, I don't know, actually. I can't remember. He started really early. And my mom basically joined it with, was came on board with him. Um, and so when all this kind of started out, it was just my mom and she didn't really know entirely what the hell we did. Um, 
And so I was career driving for her. I was doing all these other things. And then as each job, each job dropped off and I got a little more money, you know, I would buy things. I feel like I'm going to move out. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get a car. And so it's kind of like people would say, the fuck you doing? And I'm like, I don't know, man, this internet stuff people talking about is pretty good. (laughs) And uh, so when I eventually told her, I was like, yeah, I'm actually making pretty good money. And she's like, what do you actually do? And I was like, well, you know how you read your like ladies' magazines, right? Your Women's Day, yeah, yeah, People, whatever. It's like that. Except I write about nutrition products, and where you have one page of ads, I have just a little picture beside my story. It's the same thing. And she's like, "Huh?" And she's like, "So you just write about drugs?" And I was like, "No, no, no, no." no. But <laughs> so trying to explain the difference took me too long. So mm-hmm. all of my relatives would just say, "So do you like?" Do you buy and sell drugs now? I was like, oh my fucking God, no. But I was like, so you don't sell anything. And even though I would try to explain it to them, no one ever quite understood like the concept. Even though it's identical to a magazine, they couldn't really grasp it. Um, but yeah, she seems she was like, dude, if you're able to make money doing it very clearly, whatever. She didn't care. I mean, the fact that I was doing the five jobs at the time and then eventually did one, she was like, well, he yeah, must be doing well. She didn't understand it, so, yeah. Would you consider yourself a journalist then, since Stack is is basically an online magazine of uh, the latest releases? Would you consider yourself actually a journalist or just more of a uh, an enthusiast who likes to write? I would consider myself whatever you want to call me because, I, like I said, my writing was shit. When I, I, listen to this. I failed high school English. I had to repeat my last year in English because I was just, uh, I was, I, I sucked. And then when I went to university or college, I had to have English f- done in my last year. And so they were like, you can't go into college. You didn't do it. So if you do this, do this uh, two year course and then that should be good enough for you. And then I did the two year course and then um, my work or my aspirations were so good. They were like, we could give you some special acceptance into a bachelor degree. I was like, you can, you just have to apply. So I applied. And then everybody in college was like, how the fuck did you get in if you didn't pass high school? And I was like, they just gave me a special exception letter, which I later found out was only given to like two people in that entire course. So we had a course of a few hundred and I was like, damn. Either way, I then still didn't have to write because I did the graphic design and I didn't have to do any uh, written stuff mm-hmm. um, and then when we got into the degree I got a C C minus which I think was the closest you can get to a, a fail for my essay and he said the only reason I passed was because I referenced my studies correctly and I was like thanks bro that's really kind of you um, and so then the next year I was like I gotta work on it so then I gotta be and the next year I got an A and it was in the middle of that, that I was doing stacks. And so eventually, I mean, you just adapt, I guess. So I was a horrible, English, I was horrible at writing. I'm not a journalist of any kind. I didn't pass shit. I don't have any, I just evolved and did what it did and became what I needed to be to down to this essentially. Did you, when you first started writing, or I guess even today, do you try to emulate uh, anything like did you have favorite authors when you were growing up you know like I'm um, whenever I discuss things with other writers I always try to get their mindset of how they came to you know what they're writing which is just a natural evolution or did you kind of like take things that you may have read and you like the style tone or you know uh, verbiage of, of, of certain authors or journalists or sportscasters this is going to sound like supremely bad but I have never read an entire book in my whole life um, through, <laughs> through, through intermediate, through high school, I would just, I remember back in school, people said, in, in, in like middle school, people, people said, oh, you can just watch the movie. And I was like, really? They're like, yeah, man, just check it out. Make sure every book they tell you to do, there's a movie. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> and that's, that, that worked for me for my whole school years, uh, up until obviously college, but, um, then they asked you to like come up with the stories on your own kind of thing. Um, 
so I haven't. I probably read some of those uh, Choose Your Path books. I remember those, but I never read a whole book. I mean, I remember, and they said if you if you need if you have to read the book, make sure you read the first chapter in the back and the last chapter, and I'll give you some some tips. And I was like, I don't remember who told me that, but it seemed to work. I mean, I failed English, so maybe not. But um, yeah, man, I, I I don't have any authors that I could fucking name. I love movies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in college, we wrote. Uh, I had uh, I wrote two movie scripts. I think it was. Um, that was for one of my projects. I liked that, but outside of that, I, I couldn't tell you any authors, any inspirations. <laughs> no one. For those movie scripts, was it? Did you did you write it in? I guess plain text format, or are you putting in the dialogue in there? Or oh, how, I was how doing was that. I loved the dialogue. That was the That's one cool. thing I wanted. I would wanted. It. Eventually, do I guess at some point maybe is um because when we were studying a lot of the project was um you know find find something you could design and I thought that writing the script was the most thing the best thing you could design in terms of a film was because I was like man you got total control you're telling people how it's gonna look how people are gonna be how people are gonna what they're gonna say and um yeah I just really enjoyed it and people that read it said that. Like seemed extremely believable that it wasn't just one person pretending to be seven; it was actually seven people. So I was like, "Okay, cool." But then when I got out of university and college, stacked just kind of rolled out, and I was like, "Well, fuck everything." Then it's just <laughs> it's just works really good. And uh, yeah, I mean, we weren't making money like boatloads even now uh, when I stopped all my other jobs. I mean, as I said last week, I only just moved into my own house. I don't drive any sort of fancy car. But, um, yeah, we do it enough, and uh, it's enough to make stacked what it is. Outstanding. Uh, any other questions from the panel members before we move on to our next segment, fellas? Well, this is uh, a great story. I didn't know shit. <laughs> yeah, it's a great story. Shane, uh, you said that the format's been more or less the same for the past, what, seven, eight years? Yeah, about well, I mean, it changed up because in 2016 and 17 was when I got married, and then me and my wife were like, "Fuck it, let's uh, let's not rent a house." And then we, she wanted to go to the Greek island, and I said, "How about this?" This was a very, some people might think it's selfish, but whatever. I said to her, um, "How about we instead of go to the Greek islands, you know, fly halfway around the world for like five grand." We fly to the UK, hang out there, and then we go to each of these different places, like Paris, like um, you know uh, Rome and the Greek islands. And so she agreed to it. And I said, well, if we get rid of our rental property at home, and don't rent anymore, we'll have way more money to do it. So um, I don't know why I wanted to do that or why I thought it was a good idea. It was just better than going to the Greek islands for two weeks and not being able to work. Um, and so that really m made me change the way I did things. Um, I tried to emulate everything I was doing basically from an office, but from pretty much so I had 12 countries that year. Um, but that would be that was probably one of the only changes in formula, I guess, uh, in the last seven years. But but the way you would actually operate and the work that you did, I mean, it didn't really matter wh which country you were at, right? Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, it was it was always the same time. Well, so right, regardless of time zone. Uh, so the question is, is like you know how companies are rebranding every couple of years, changing their formulas, changing their labels. I, I I do feel like it's needed. I mean, I'm doing it pretty much on a annual basis, but. My question is, like, do you think, even though obviously your formula is a, is a successful formula, it's uh, you know it's paying off. You're successful. You're doing well. And were you considering in the near future perhaps changing anything about the way you're doing it, or it's more of an attitude? If it's not broken, then just keep going and doing what you're doing. I mean, I've looked at. Uh, I follow a lot of other blogs and news sites. And they haven't really changed over the years. Like, I mean, in terms of what they're doing and what they're sharing, like you'll add things in, like, um, you know, ratings for reviews or you know, certain adding a podcast. 
I mean, we've added little features, but the primary formula of shared news, I mean, it's, it's, it's tried and true, right? It's ever since newspapers, that's what they did. They put a headline, a picture if they had it, and information on the story, and that has not changed. I mean, I don't know when news started, but it had to have been around for like 100 years. I would take a stab and say something like that. And in terms of uh, in terms of mistakes, you know, even though you are successful, like I mentioned, sure, yeah. Um, uh, I, I know. I, I mean, again, I've been uh, in the supplement industry as a, as a supplement owner for the past five years, and I already know. And we talked about it about the mistakes that I have made, and I think it's always good to go and kind of admit to the mistakes that you've made. Uh, is there anything you regret about the things you've done, and you could have done it better? Uh, oh, no, n never. No, never, never, never regret. <laughs> And even if I said to this, I said to my wife, I said, if I had passed English in uh, high school and gone straight to a bachelor's degree in college and maybe refocused what I wanted to do, I may never have stumbled across shit right. in the gym. I may never have stumbled across like any interest in my, my interests in swimming and working out may have been overshadowed by wanting to be a great graphic designer. I may never have found supplements. And if I had never found supplements, I would never have found my friend who distributed supplements and I may never have then started my store and then started my blog. And then I mean, shit, a thousand different things could have been different, but I could not be more happy than where I am right now. No, yeah, no, no. I, I actually didn't mean that. I mean about uh, stacked, uh, stacked as a, oh, I don't think any, any mistakes I made would, I would change. Okay. Zero. I don't think I've ever, I mean, even when you do like, even if you do, you, you word something wrong and someone gets annoyed, I'm like, okay, now I know that annoys people. Who knew, right? If I hadn't been told that or found that out, I could have made that mistake when I got even bigger. Or, you know, um, saying certain things about this brand, saying certain things about that brand. It's just you live and learn. I'd rather find them out than not find them out. Because, I mean, you only ever do a mistake when it's something you don't know you shouldn't have done. So it's worth learning. Okay, but I mean, fortunately, I've never had to like lose thousands of fucking dollars on anything yet. Oh yeah, that's. How did yeah. the uh, the Pro Expo go, Shane? How's the reception been for the, over the past week? It was good. It was really good. Like it was always tricky to figure out like how it's going to go because it's such a unique concept. Like we do these weird things that are like not really from any other industry back when we did it in 2016, 2017, it was a unique concept back then. But, um, this time was probably the first time I guess that we had this many brands get on board. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's just one of those things where people wanted to be a part of it. Um, we encourage as many people as we could to go. And I think people ended up loving it. Like, the, the special deals, the the the, the launch uh, offers that people made, um, cause exclusive tea went off really well. Um, inspired, you know, making pre-orders through there for their new Devastate. That was the kind of stuff we wanted, and um, people received it really well. It's hard though sometimes because we're such a industry specific site, um, and it's difficult because while we I think we did the concept pretty good. It, it can be difficult to understand if someone's like come to the virtual expo and you get there some people who aren't familiar with it because you can't instruct people too much. You can't be like, you need to go here and then go there and then go here and do this and this. It needs to be very uh, native. It needs to be very like fluent. And so I guess the people that get it, can like go around and navigate very easily. Some people just absolutely love it, but then some people get there and be like, what, like, what do I do? Right. And it's hard to communicate to both. So it's one of those things where I think, but that's the internet. Like I think the internet is, um, you know, like my daughter, she'll swipe up, she'll press the skip ad button on Netflix, but it's the skip <laughs> intro button, but she recognizes the button that she needs to press to skip shit. Right. So it's one of those things that people will slowly, I've noticed slowly adapt to. And it's, um, I guess it's just the internet kind of thing. And a lot of people noticed it, picked up on it, and, and got used to it this time around um, more than so before. And we had just so many special offers, so many special deals. It was 
It was awesome. Outstanding. Yeah. All right. Well, if that concludes the, the questions for Shane, I think we'll move on to uh, this week's yes. main event topic. Does that sound good, gentlemen? Let's do this. Okay. All right. So we're, we're going to get the, a little deep. Okay. I was going to say, a if, little you heavy. The, if you sent the topic earlier, I haven't read it. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I, I've pulled oh. this as a wild card. So basically, <laughs> nobody ever has time to prepare for this. This is, this is what makes it real raw and uh, really fun for, for me on my end. Um, yeah, we're unscripted here. We try to make this as unprofessional as possible, you know. You know how it is. Um, so that we're gonna we're gonna get a little deep, a little heavy, um, and you know this is this. I'm gonna be honest and say this is a little bit uh, selfish question on my part, but I want to pick the brains of you four gentlemen. Uh, at once every six to twelve months, I go through uh, where you feel just completely burnt out from work. Uh, you know, you're struggling. The words aren't coming through. You know, you just feel like you're in a, a rut. And so, you know, we're all in business for ourselves here. So I want to know, what do you individuals, do you all struggle with this periodically? If so, what do you do to get yourself out of it? I mean, obviously, this where I, you know, I'm not taking a whole week off of work. I'll get the deliverables done that I need to get done because, um, you know, companies are still dependent on you for certain things. And so that'll get done. But it feels like it takes three times as long where if you can write, you know, 1,500 words in an hour, it's maybe taking like two and a half to three hours to get something done just to put something in kind of a perspective. So, you know, since all of us are kind of self-motivated, we work for ourselves, we're in business for ourselves, what what do you do when you go through these periods, if ever? And, you know, do you try to uh, just caffeinate yourself through it? Do you just take a week off and say, fuck it, I'll come back to it when I'm ready? Uh, so let, let's start there. And TJ, you look like you're, you're ready to jump on this one. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to let you lead things off, man. Yeah, it's interesting. I was just thinking about it while you were talking. And uh, trying to figure out, do I relate to the feeling? And I definitely get... I, so, honestly, I, I don't think I've ever gotten to the point where I just said, um, like, I'm, I need a break. Like, just never happened to me. Like, I, I, yeah. I get... I'm scared by the concept of a break. Like, literally, it scares the shit out of me. If my wife says, okay, we need to go, let's go on a vacation or something like that, it scares the shit out of me. Like I, I need to be doing. And so I've never, I do get, you get stuck. I, I get that. Like I understand where you feel a bit uh, burned down with something and you say, shit, I just can't do this thing anymore. So I'll move on to the, to another thing. I think that's realistic, by the way. I, I think you get, you know, you're working on something. It's just like, that's it. It's not, you're not there. It's just not working. You're not you, you're not getting anything done. You're all over the place. You're moving, so I think in that case, I move on to another side to to do another thing, like just uh, you know switch it up. And uh, but I don't get. I'm telling you, I'm I'm shit scared of doing nothing. I, I envy people who can. I have a lot of good friends, including my wife and stuff like that. Even though she's intense, they can literally chill down. Like like they can actually go and chill down. I, I'm, I'm so unchilled by definition. <laughs> like, I am the reverse of chill. I can't <laughs> chill down. I just can't. And I've never been, like, you know, all, all, I, I, there's this song I listen to. It's always on some grown shit, it says in the sentence there. And it's been like that since, like, 13. I don't know. Like, I, I can't remember myself chilling down unless I'm drunk, by the way. <laughs> so alcohol, and honestly, because I barely, barely drink, it's been a huge, it's actually, it's, it's uh, I'm thinking about getting back to drinking some alcohol because it's just the only way to take the edge off for me is uh, to, and and weed doesn't work on me, unfortunately. And by the way, which probably is somehow related to my un, inability to chill. <laughs> like I literally cannot, weed does nothing to me. And my all my sisters and brothers are stoners and they always come up with this shit and they say, hey man, no, 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 listen. You just took the wrong shit. I have this medical crap here that was grown somewhere in the desert in Colombia. You take this shit, you inject it to your dick somewhere, and it will infect. Dude, nothing. Like, zero. Bang, bongs, bongs, nothing. Like, 
nothing works on me. Yeah, so, but I, I relate to the feeling of you're stuck. I definitely relate to the feeling of you're stuck. I would just say, it's like, you know, just move on to the next, uh, just move on. Uh, I yeah, move on and that's now. what, it's It's not the sensation that I just want to be done with everything and I'm ready to just like pull a parachute and say, I'm just going to lay in bed for like six days straight. It's It's the fact that I want to be doing something, like I want to be in that groove and there's yeah, that cognitive right. dissonance where, my brain's not working, but then the back half yeah. of my brain is saying, get your ass in gear. This needs to, you, you, you're better right. than this. You should be able to crank out these things. And so that <laughs> kind of throws me into a loop of, well, let me try this new tropic. Let me try this caffeine. Let me try sleeping a little that bit. That does more. help, by the way. <laughs> that does help. I mean, it does help when you, um, I mean, sometimes, definitely, I'll use nootropics and things like that, but mostly when I just want to enhance focus and stuff like that rather than, uh, get out of a zone. I think people get burned down, but I'll tell you this, right? When people worked for me in, uh, in larger uh, setups, then yeah, people get burned all the time. I, I yeah. see people get burned and, and, it's, uh, and you can feel it. Their productivity goes down, they're down. People need time, time off. I actually think that that's, uh, that's a thing that, uh, when people say, you know, work-life balance, Mm -hmm. right for me personally fuck balance like i i just don't i don't like balance like it's not my thing but yeah for i love my job i love what i do it's just when you when you run up against that that yeah. impact it's like you it's, it feels like you're constantly ramming your head against the wall and there's not way, right. no way to get through it so yeah yeah, yeah no, i understand what you're saying yeah 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 what, what about you shane you you write a lot you're writing you know i would say probably as as mm -hmm. much as i do on a daily basis because you're covering you know 10 to 15 new products each day so how do you deal with trying to describe things and, and it when you deal with a, a mental hurdle or a block? I'm TJ on this. I have not I have heard about this, but I have I have not come across <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm I, so what, it's what I'm getting from you two so far I, is that I'm, uh, I'm just the asshole. <laughs> I just I I don't know. Like if anything, not doing work is gonna get me to want to feel like I should have a break or like right. relax. Like if I'm not doing it, I'm constantly like, why? How? I'm not gonna make any money or further myself at all unless I'm doing this. So I am the opposite. If I'm not doing it, and yeah, like, I mean, the only time where I may get slow is if I'm tired, and I've had to work in some pretty shitty places at some pretty shitty times, and even then. I think the worst was I stayed awake for 54 hours. I think it was. I we, we we flew to the Arnold one year, and I stayed awake the whole time. Um, it was a 26 hour flight. Um, I don't know why I stayed awake. I wanted to watch some movies, and they had some cool ones, and so I stayed awake the whole time. But I had written ahead one entire day, maybe like 20 stories, the day before. Um, caught the plane and then when we got on the plane I knew I had to do more work so I knew I had to do it and then we arrived in New York at like I don't know mid like late night late evening and then we had to catch an overnight bus because I wanted to save money to Columbus and I had to work on the bus and I thought you know that's easy it was a bad idea um mm -hmm. it was dark there were babies crying there was uh like and the PowerPoint wouldn't stay in, just kept falling out of it when we were on the bus. Um, and I still did my work. And then I stayed awake the entire next day with the Arnold and then trained in the animal cage. I, When I'm tired, that's the only time where I'll get slow. But even at the maximum tiredness, I could still like just light up and just be like, let's do this shit. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is. Just like TJ... I've never, I only take Christmas day off. That's the only day off a year I take. The only other time I've probably taken a day off was um, for my wedding. And that was when I wrote, I think it must have been like 30 something stories two days before. And then we took the wedding off and then the day after. Um, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah. There you go, um, man. It, like, I just take some caffeine if I'm feeling tired and I'm, I'm electric. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, I say Robert, Robert, Robert's turn. Yeah. What about uh, Lucas and Robbie? Lucas, you want to go first? You go first, man. Okay. Um, 
I, I, I think like, uh, like what Shane said, like if, if I enjoy my work, I'm definitely, I don't get burned out. I mean, in terms of that, if I'm enjoying something, I'm doing it, but I can get sort of tired, you know, especially if it's like a routine again and again. And, and plus, yeah. you know, all of us have, uh, you know, uh, families, we all have other responsibilities. It's not just work, but we, we multitasking on a daily basis with different, with different things. Um, so I can get tired, I can get, uh, which will inevitably slow me down for sure. Um, and then I just need to, n- not exactly to rest as in sleep or something like that. I mean, just like Shane, I, I, everybody knows I enjoy movies. So, you know, watching a good movie will definitely kind of get me relaxed and enjoy myself and maybe kind of even refueled. But uh because I think the key the key is balance when you when you work hard and and if you get tired, you know all it takes for me is maybe spend some time with my family or go to the gym and maybe I don't know hit the back or something like that, especially you know if it's because you know running running a business and uh, we we deal with a lot of people, and uh, you know like in our group yesterday, we chatted certain people can get on our nerves and that and that can throw us off a little bit and uh, you know, we just need to, you know, if we were kids, we would punch that person in the face and problem solved. Unfortunately, it's not the case anymore because everybody is a hero behind the computer, you know, keyboard warriors. So it's not very easy to reach somebody and punch him in the face and teach him a lesson. So in that case, I'll go to the gym or I'll go punch the bag or, or something like that. And it kind of helps me re- get refocused and kind of get me back on a horse and just continue with it. But I, I, I think that even for you, Robert, what you said, you know, what you're going through, I think it's totally understandable. And it's, it's a probably a combination of not so much as burned out. Um, I know that you were working with different companies and I can only imagine, you know, that it can be smooth ride every time. Um, you know, I'm taking a wild guess here, but I'm pretty sure some of your uh, customers, so to speak, are probably in clients are not probably very easy people to deal with, you know, and all it takes sometimes it's not even work related, but just interaction with a certain person, you know, you can have a wonderful day and you can have everything is going well for you. You work, you enjoy your work, you're doing what you're supposed to do. And then just one asshole will fucking say something and it can just destroy your mood, destroy, which, you know, inevitably inevitably is going to influence your work as well. And it can get you, burned out we're to a point where like why the fuck am i doing this you know if i'm not even appreciated and just an example of course you know i don't mean anything by it specifically but i think because we multitasking on a daily basis and we are so busy uh i know it happened to me for sure where you know i just get tired mostly it's not even tired of work maybe it's tired of certain interactions and certain people and all i need then is just kind of regroup I think you bring up an interesting point. Uh, so where I do get tired, actually, it's not... What do I have an echo, by the way? Is it me? I, I had it too, actually. It's not me. One, two. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I was going to say that uh, I get tired of talking to people. That's yes. Yeah. Like, uh, I wake up at... Uh, because I'm, I'm on calls 99% of the time. So when yeah. I start... I wake up at 4... I start my first call is usually at 6 a.m. And then by 5, 6 p.m., I don't want to talk with anyone. Like, I'm done <laughs> talking with people. I just, even sometimes before, depending on how many fuck up, fucked up people I, to- I had to talk with. But I have no energy. So I, I'm okay working. I'm okay doing shit, creating stuff, fine. But I just don't want to talk with anyone. Yeah. I'll definitely get to that point at around... So, like, for example, don't talk to me after, like, 5 p.m. Eastern. I'm, I'm usually, like, I don't want to talk with anyone. That, that's true. And you know what? I think that all of us probably have to talk to a lot of people, like you said, you know, a lot of text messages, phone calls, emails, uh, direct messages on Instagram, Facebook. Like, it's, it's nonstop. And it's totally understandable. I, I don't have a problem with it. But as, as we grow our brands, as we grow, you know, as individuals, as we grow our businesses, obviously the you know the the volume of those calls and the volume of those messages keeps growing and sometimes i'll get a message from somebody like oh great you know i actually enjoy it relaxes me talking to a certain person 
Um, and I actually have a habit. I always had a habit of trying to answer a message right away. Uh, you know, if somebody's texting me, I, I don't want to forget. And I think it's, uh, it's rude if I don't answer it for a long time or something like that. So I'm trying to answer. But lately, especially, you know, with everything that all of us are going through, Sometimes it will take me a little bit longer to answer a certain text or something like that. I even told people, like, you know, if it's an emergency, just call me or put like, I don't know, like, like, a, like a text message, emergency, text me, call me or whatever. And I understand. And I've had a few cases, especially lately, where somebody will send me a text message and I, I, I can miss it. I mean, we're all human. It's possible. And especially when you're getting bombarded by so many messages. So I get, and then I get a text message literally maybe an hour or two later from the very sa same person because I noticed like holy shit she, he just texted me like an hour ago or two hey man where are you what the fuck you don't answer my messages whoa you don't love me anymore you don't respect me what am I not good enough and that's a sure thing to piss me off is like a hundred percent it's a sure thing to piss me off <laughs> it's for sure not me I, I call it the two question marks uh, trauma. <laughs> Like everyone, like, you know, someone will, will like call me or something like that. And then I'll get like a, a message with like two questions mark. Like what the, f man, <clears throat> like if the dude is next to me, I'm breaking his neck. Like with the two question marks. Like I, I can't, like I'm now getting fucking angry. Just thinking about the two question marks. Like where are you? Like I want to kill someone with two question marks. Like fuck you, get out of my system. I, I think Lucas, uh, Lucas is probably going to be the one who talks to the most people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Um, I've got uh, every day, basically, it's an interaction with different people from different countries. So you need to respect everyone, basically. But sometimes it's like, I remember when I was starting my job at the Prometheus and I had a phone calls around like one or two in the morning. And it was crazy, you know? Yeah, because... People were like, you know, calling me from different countries, different time zones, and they were expecting me to, to you know, to, to grab the call and, and respond right away. Um, to be honest, I'm a type of a person that uh, loves to be, you know, active as much as possible. So basically, whenever someone is messaging me, I'm texting back in like five to ten minutes. I think it's it's just my my type of uh, work ethic, and I think that you know people uh, will respect you if you will you know get back to them as quickly as possible. And I've noticed that, and that's how I built you know my reputation through all these years. And you know, if you give back to people, they will give back to you. That's how karma works, you know. So. Uh, I really respect people that uh, that you know have this exactly same uh, work ethic as me. Uh, but as far as like you know the burnout and everything, I think you know uh, some people have this this kind of like <laughs> they need some time off, vacations, those kinds of things. <laughs> I don't remember when the last time I, I was on a vacation. I when, I went, I when I went, when I went to, for example, to Turkey or to Greece on a, on a like two week trip, <laughs> basically every day I was on my phone. Every day I was on, on my computer. I was responding to messages. Even my boss, that like he said, "Go enjoy your time." I was still working. I was still doing something. I had to do something, and uh, you know. And as far as this burned out, I think, you know, every, every, every person needs its, you know, its jump off. To me, I, I live in this great environment, you know, uh, I live very close to woods. So that's my, like, uh, a perfect type of a, like, scenario that I can just, like, go for a quick walk or, like, just put my head into a different different spot, you know, or like listen to a podcast, do something like this, those kind of things. So, yeah, man, I'm a simple guy, you know, but I like I like simple things. And, and, and of course, like, you know, stems, yeah, they're, they're cool, you know, but 
you can't like just rely on them like 24 7 you know you need to like you need to have those those kind of things just to lay low and chill chill back but yeah man yeah i, I, I would agree you, with uh, yeah. great tj oh, uh, yeah, I was, I, was, I was gonna tell you a story. I think one of the things, though, that's interesting is that uh, when you're married and kids and wife and, sh- and stuff like that, like Robert mentioned, you need to have a supporting environment. I mean, you can create a lot of friction with being uh, so hyper. So I want to tell you a true story. I don't know if I told Robic this story, but it's a true story, right? So the the um, so like last year, December, right? It was, it's when, um, I think I mentioned that we sold our uh, cybersecurity company, right? And, uh, and it was after, a lot, I mean, it took some time and it wor- we worked like it was really intense. Even in my standards, the, the years were super intense, uh, building the company and pressure and all that stuff. Anyway, long story short, I'm back, uh, like, uh, so the last three weeks when we sold it, there was, it's uh, like you would expect in the movies, right? The negotiation and stuff like that. It took about three months. But the last three weeks were insane. Every freaking minute, it looked like it's going to break down, like the deal. It's just, and, and we had, so in the tech world, right? We raise money and stuff like that. And we had employees. And I literally was on my last dollar in the bank. Like there was, I needed to, like we were selling the company while we were raising money. We decided to sell. Anyway, long story short. I know if this thing goes down, I need to like find money in like two seconds. Anyway, super stressful, super super stressful. Like and I not sleeping, super pressure. And I'm back. I'm uh, I'm in Israel, and uh, after three weeks uh, of like this thing, I've like last minute. By the way, there was a lot of drama. I'll spare you. But last minute, okay, we closed it, right? So I get the approval for the lawyer that uh, the deal is signed and stuff like that. And I come, I text my wife. So this is uh, literally, this is, I, I still have the text somewhere. So this is just to tell you the environment I'm in. So I text my wife. I say, hey, and she knows, right? Like that there's a lot of pressure and stuff. And I say, hey, all good. We signed, right? So, and I'm telling you, it was without details. It was really intense four years before that and stuff like that. So my wife repeats, replies, and this is quote unquote. She says, Oh, okay, good. You deserve it. Now get back to fucking work. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. it. That That's it. Awesome. That's what literally, by the way. Now, if you and and no, and I can visualize her. Like, and if you ask her about this, she wouldn't smile. She says, "Yeah, what did you want him to say? Get yeah, what do you want?" Wait, was there a, was, were the messages was like separated? <laughs> was it like, "Oh, that's good," and then then it was like another message came through. No, 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 no. One message. message. No, no, man. One message. One message. Okay, good. You deserve it. Now get back to work. Seriously, <laughs> like nothing. And like, if you ask her now, she wouldn't even smile. She says, what, what do you want me to say? Get back to fucking work. What do you want? Like a medal? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> like, like, she seriously. Been like, you know what? A medal wouldn't have been bad. <laughs> <laughs> TJ, so, is, so, she, is she from Israel too? Yeah, yeah, she's uh, she's the okay. hardcore version of Israel. Yeah, she's, I, I, she's, uh, the, the old country say, man. She's an old country uh, tough as nails. Kid. I will also she's say that of all the people I've met in the industry, this is going back to Lucas. He is the biggest fan of supplements that I that I have ever met. Lucas is by far the biggest fan of all the people I know and met, even myself. That guy, <laughs> you know, and I think you should put that on a shirt, Lucas. Stims, they're good. Well, dot, 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 dot. They're all right. Yeah, till today but, I have, till today I have the the first wristband that like that Shane uh, released. Yeah, the, the only until, stacked accessory in history. Yeah, yeah, it was probably one of the first. Accessories. It was. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, he's the. I have to say, like of all the people you meet in Europe, uh, that anyone Lucas has come in contact, he's like, everyone said, "Oh my God, that guy loves supplements. He, everything." Yeah. Day in, day out. It's yeah, but you know, that's the thing, you know, that's that's what like puts us in this space, you know, that you know, you love what you do and basically that helps you, you know, to to move with, with your with your work. To me it's not it's not like just like a work. It's more it's more than that. It's 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 a re- interaction between people, but it's also like building this relationship and you know and you you share this passion this this some this 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 is the, this this vibe you know 
I remember my first FIBO or like or first event when I was, you know, just like a, a regular guy, and I was like walking through all the booths and 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 one watching every every part of of the industry, and I was like, I wanted to just like just like breathe everything, you know, and I was like just such a super passionate about everything, and now it's like being a part of it is like. It's something. It's something that you just you just you just can't explain, you know. So I will, me, I will say I will say that about the industry. Like it's one of those things that, like back then, it's like, oh, you know, it'd be cool to work in this. It'd be cool to work yeah. in that. And then you finally work in it, and you yeah. realize that it's literally like, like you know, everybody knows everybody. There are small guys that like yeah. you aren't acquainted with, but like it's just one of those things that's so weird. And I remember hearing people that say this to me, say, I'd really like to work in the industry. And I'm like, back before I even got into this, they said, like, oh, man, once you're in, you're in. Like, people will hire you even if you're, like, as long as you did something, they'll hire you somewhere else for anything. Yeah. And that's, tr- that's true for every industry almost, by the way. Oh, that's crazy. I never do that because it's really all I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it's true for every... I mean, if you come from... Uh, in, when I say industry, a category, right? Uh, tech is too big. But yeah. like, if you come... like, I saw people who developed amazing careers just by jumping from one place to another because they've been in another place. Oh, you yeah. worked for this company. Oh, yeah, of course. Come on. And you look at the guy and say, dude, the, the motherfucker is a retard. But yeah, but he, he, had, he came from there and then he jumped there and then he yeah, jumped yeah. there and he jumped there. And the, the person who hires you needs a couple of years to understand that you are a retard. Yeah. You just had a couple of years of the guy that was saying goodbye. So anyway, but that, it happens in every category, I would say. Yeah, if you yeah. look at most people's resumes in the supplement industry, they'll be with uh, you know a sales rep for this company for two years, and then they're with another company. I mean, it's it's, it's as bad as the the yeah. influencers or the athletes are. It's like you you jump from sales rep here to brand manager here to vice Which president sense, here. Right? And, uh, but it makes I, sense. I, it makes sense. I yeah, you, you, you leave companies to get a promotion. It's the same thing. Right. It was, it was exactly. the, same yeah. thing the oil and gas consulting field and engineering. You left one thing. Once they tried to pigeon you in, in like stress analysis, then you go over here and you do fluid mechanics and you jump somewhere else to go project management. And, right, yeah. right. It's called, uh, you, I mean, sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's one of the ways to move on. It's you shift to the left and then up, left, yep. up, left, up, right? You can't just stay in one place. Correct. There's more opportunities outside, yeah. Yeah, some people are like bees, you know, they fuck every flower, you know, they <laughs> like, wow. yeah. It's a perfect analogy, basically. You know, so. it is a perfect analogy. I never thought about these fucking flowers. I never heard. Like I had a way more gentle visual in my head of yeah. what they do with the flowers, but that's I, the, I, I can. Expect, I expected that coming out of TJ, but not Lucas. Yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna use that though, Lucas. <laughs> I, I want to like make a note pull that clip out. That'll be the teaser clip fucking, for this episode. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like these fucking flowers. Is that a Polish yeah. thing? Is that like? Is that? Like, yeah. I was gonna say, that, it's like, a bullet? Because he, oh, so, he said it's He said it's so, an analogy. It's an analogy. He said it so but like it, yeah, naturally, right? He had to. He had to but uh, like in in Poland, like you use this with the fuck, or the fuck is your adaptation? Like in it's my it, adaptation. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Can you say that in Polish for us, Lucas? Yeah, please. Pieprzyć każde 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 kwiat. I think, I, I think Lucas's English is better than his Polish. <laughs> yeah. oh, you were mumbling there. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. Fucking flowers. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's good. It's beautiful. Flowers, yeah. That's, 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 that's a good thing. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll end the main event discussion. <laughs> that. That's beautiful. <laughs> right. Yeah, summation. Summation of the topic. There we go. Uh, Shane, I'm going to toss things back your way, man, for the uh, the Fast Five, Fast Furious Five stories. Okay, I have, I have, a, I have a few. I'm going to go. I'm going to start with Robic on this one because I know he's going to like this topic. Is uh, I'm talking about the performer shakers, the superhero. Uh, they do all the superheroes now. They do Transformers. They do GI Joe. They do Power Rangers now. Um, what? what what's, I mean, you've been you've been a fan of supplements so long. What's your take on the, uh, not necessarily like the collabs that you've seen um, in terms of flavors, but the collabs with the industry in terms of 
superheroes. Like uh, it's almost a, you know, everybody loves superheroes who lifts weights. I mean, if you don't, uh, you got to be like one in a million. I think that everybody has that some some hero in their life, uh, you know, they look up to or something. And uh, you know, when performer bought in the superhero supplement shakers. It's like a match made in heaven, right? Like it seems like just why it had never been done before. Um, we have seen a few like supplements, like uh, my protein did the DC Comics uh, protein powder and stuff. Um, what's your uh, what's your what's your feeling on these the, uh, the superhero infusion? Obviously, we haven't got like too close in terms of supplements, but the shaker department seems to be um, you know a big 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 thing. Um, you know what, I, I think that, you know, we talked about the protein powders, right? Like about the flavors. And, you know, I said about my take about it, that I'm open to anything. I think if it works for the consumer, it, if it's not necessarily something for me, we make products for the consumer, we all make products to make money and, you know, to be successful. So I, I think that opinions are completely irrelevant. Because the thing is, is that our personal opinion doesn't reflect on the consumer. Um, in terms of me as a consumer, when it comes to perform, I remember when they released the shakers, I think at the Olympia a couple of years ago, I remember that I was the first one, well, among the first ones to buy Punisher and Batman shakers. And I still have them. I still use them. I think they're very cool. And I'm not like really a huge comics book uh, fan. I mean, I don't classify myself as one of those guys who are like really obsessed with them. But I, I do like Batman. I do like Punisher. You know, we all have, all have our favorites. I think it's a very innovative idea. I think it's a great idea. I think it could be, like I said, it's not, I'm not in that business. But I think you can go a lot further with that. You can have, uh, you yeah. know, I think Harry Potter and Rambo and I don't know, Rocky and motivational quotes. I, don't, I think the market is like really, uh, it's like we talked about the energy drinks. Like everybody does 200 milligram of caffeine, 300 milligram of caffeine, 400. Everything is around the caffeine and then somebody will add BCA or some other shit that is typically underdosed or ineffective because nobody fucking wants to spend money and, and release something good. But uh, I think the market is wide open. So in terms of what performer do, we actually ordered from them uh, face masks with a palm logo. and. Oh, yeah. The quality is absolutely phenomenal. The service was absolutely great. You know, they perhaps slightly more expensive that you would order from China or something like that. Mm. But everybody loves them. These guys are definitely on top of things. I think that the, the shakers, I think it's an absolutely... I, I heard a few people who were making fun of them and they said that it's unnecessary and stuff like that. But think about it. I mean, if you're a fan of Apollon or you're a fan of Salucor or Ghost and you have a shaker because you either got it for free or you bought it because you're a, a fan of the brand, that's great, you know. Uh, but at the end of the day, majority of people will want something like a superhero or something like that. It, yeah. will, it will sell better. I think it's more universal. I think it has a wider appeal. I think those guys are brilliant. I don't know how it works in terms of licensing and stuff like that. And, you know, last night on social media, and we guys talked about it, was a conversation about, uh, you know, flavors that are, resemble alcoholic beverages. I'm not going to go there, Shane. Stop smiling. <laughs> but uh, the the truth is, I think, who the fuck says that? Like, to be honest with you, from, from me personally, when I see all these, like, fruity and fucking chocolate and cereal kind of uh, flavors, I'm not into that. But they sell. There is market for them. People like them. So who the fuck cares what I like them or not? They make me a killing. They successful. Good for them. You know, I like my strawberry margarita. I like my uh, pina colada and stuff like that. I like those flavors, even though I'm not an alcohol drinker at all. I mean, shit, I don't drink. But the thing is, is that when it comes to what Performer did, I think it was a brilliant idea. And I, yeah. I, I commend those guys. And anyone who says otherwise is just an idiot because, you know, you always have somebody who is a fan of Superman or somebody who is a fan of Batman and the selling shit load of them. They're a little bit more expensive than a conventional shaker. But let's be honest, they also look a lot cooler, too. Oh, yeah. I will say that I was I think we were one of the I can't remember the year that they, we first saw them. They bought they only had Superman and Batman. I think three years ago, maybe four. It was recently. It wasn't that long ago. It, it was a while ago. It was a while ago? 
Yeah, they had Superman and Batman, but that was it. They had nothing else. They oh, had, okay. uh, it was an, uh, it was. I remember talking to the guys. I've talked to them recently. I was like, dude, you had a blanket on a table, and Superman and Batman. That was it. They had their regular shakers with that uh, the agitator down the middle, but the uh, the Superman and Batman were the first two. And my wife said, she's like, this is a fucking genius. So I long, like, yeah. so long as they can expand on it. And like, that's the thing. Like anyone can do, well, I guess not anyone, but a lot of people can do one-offs. But for them to take it from that, just the Superman and Batman to now do like, it's it's phenomenal. Like, you know, what they've done and expand to Transformers, G.I. Joe, Power Rangers, Marvel Universe. And then they teamed up every Marvel movie launch with a superhero shake at a match. It was just it was genius and it was been cool to watch. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been awesome. So the next one I got is for Lucas and this is of course the core nutritionals balls. I don't know what they're going to call them. Um, as far as I, I, I'm pretty sure it's core balls. It's a weird name, but, um, basically Lucas knows this, uh, core nutritionals has come out with its first functional product and it's, I believe a bag of balls to match the nutrition of a protein but uh, so yeah, five balls, twenty grams of protein. I got. I, I mean, what's your? Obviously, Core is a big brand that's never touched the functional space, and they're going to approach it with a very functional, like, route. They're not going like you know, conventional. They obviously they've got a bag of balls instead of a bar. Um, what's your thoughts on it? You obviously saw the macros. I know. I know you saw the macros. Um, and you've heard obviously Doug talk about them. <coughs> Yeah, so, I mean, what's your, yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was uh, watching today's uh, podcast. <laughs> Doc is recording it every every week uh, with Midi. So, so yeah, I was watching it. I was following them. Um, just just wanted to, to, to grab some news. So, yeah, they are releasing the, the balls. Uh, they will be like um, 5 grams of fat, 20 grams of carbs and 20 grams of protein, something yeah. like this, those kind of spreads. 10 sugar, uh, I think, 10 to, 10 to 12, yeah, something, yeah. all from uh, honey. Sugar comes from honey, exactly, yeah. So five balls in, in the package, and uh, it, it should be like, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, as, as you said, uh, comparable to a protein bar. So, so, yeah, I think it's a very innovative idea. Uh, and we spoke about it like a few, few times back in the days when they were like, when it was just like an idea, you know, and yeah. now I think, you know, when this idea comes to life, I think it's, it's going to be pretty cool. You know, something, something different, uh, in, uh, UK, there are some brands that are releasing the, the balls. Yeah. There's uh, a few, there's been a few who did it. Australia. Yeah, there's a... but- Body like, did it a while ago. Yeah, yeah, but they are like more functional and they are more vegan friendly. Mm. So they are not like super protein packed. They are basically like just you know based on superfoods ingredients such as like goji berries, this, uh, dates, those kind of things. But they are not like super packed with with, with protein. So that idea is definitely better. I think when uh, uh, when they released the the jerky. Uh, from uh, America, America yeah. yeah, that was like a brilliant idea. So with that idea, I think it's it's also a very cool concept. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so it's it's something it's something different for uh, for consumer, you know, because every brand right nowadays is like is trying to release uh, a bar. bar, yeah, and I think it's like offering something different, maybe like. Uh, protein chip or like or even i don't know other snack is is a, is a cool idea and you know me that and you know that i i really love functional foods you know and this category and i think that you know spreading and releasing different different type of products is is, is, is a cool, cool how much option. how much do you think flavor is going to play a role because i know doug is taking a very strong approach on this with nutrition and for yeah. me you know, like when it comes to a protein bar, you, you, you can you can get me the best macros in the world, right? You can get me zero carbs, 20 protein, zero fat, right? Mm-hmm. I'm probably not going to eat it if it tastes like ass. Mm-hmm. So well, what, 
he's taking a very nutritional approach on this. He's saying, you know, it's his macros and he wanted the macros he wanted with yeah. taste sounding secondary. Yeah. And I always fear that a bodybuilder's approach to that doesn't necessarily result in the best tasting bar for everyone. So yeah. how much do you think, like how good do you think it's going to have the taste for you to be like, yeah, I'll grab the core balls and like, you know, compared to other stuff. You know what? I think that macros ain't, ain't, uh, ain't the only thing. I think it all comes down to ingredients and what, yeah. what type of, uh, of stuff he's going to use in, in these balls. He said that he, uh, the, the, the ball is going to be based on like core protein and honey and that's that's what i that's what i know yeah he doesn't release much else yeah yeah he's probably gonna use maybe some some fats like coming if, from from, if it's from as, nuts if it's as no. good or as tasty as like the outright bar let's just say it's as good as that uh, yeah. you know very nut about based um would you what? grab that the balls over grab them by like, the balls grab them by the balls <laughs> would you grab the balls over I was waiting for that like, to come the top, the, the barbells bar. Would you grab, if it's as good, like your favorite best tasting bar, would you grab, uh, if it tasted as good as the outright bar, would you trade up, would you trade to get for the extra nutrition Definitely, over yeah. your favorite bar? Definitely. I'm not like, you know, for, for me, it's not like just like, oh yeah, till till the rest of my life, I'm going to consume only, only bars, so I'm just going to like, Put one one on the pedestal and just gonna eat eat just one 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 flavor or or one one category. No. Well, what I'm if it just, tastes worse than the outright bar? I'm sorry. What if it what if it doesn't taste? What if it's like a little bit worse than the outright bar? Would you still grab it? Yeah, sure, of course. Oh, I always I always like to, I always like to try some something something different. You know? Oh no, I mean like not for the first time, but like let's say it tastes worse than the outright bar and you've had it. Would you go back to it? Yeah, so that's what I was trying to get. I was trying to figure out what where, where your balance was like. Yeah, yeah if you know. it's, uh, I mean, I think at the end of the day, if if the thing doesn't taste good, you're yeah. not gonna stick with it. I, I and um, and yeah. no one, no one will. It was maybe true 20 years ago when you had no alternatives. In today's world, yeah, if you think if you give me an amazing thing, it's 20 grams protein, zero fat, zero carbs, zero everything, 20 grams protein, and it tastes like ass, like you say. Yeah. Why would you get back to that? It's yeah. never going to last. What I, that's what I was getting. Right? I was trying to figure never out. Gonna last. Yeah. Just Macros. drink a protein shake and move yeah. on with your life. I mean, why would yeah. you eat something that tastes like... Yeah. That's what I was I interested in. I was, I was curious because, like I said, nutrition is obviously is, is the most one of the most important things. But, you know, with a nutrition focus can sometimes come some downsides. Yeah. Um, Okay, so the next story I have, and I got some two good ones I think for the for the last part. And this is I'm going to go to Robert for this one. I thought this was this is not a stacked typical story. This is very weird, but the only reason I shared it was because it stood out. Um, I don't know if you called it, but it's a brand called Brave Robot. Um, so Brave Robots come out with a ice cream. And it's no way in, no way functional. It's not a um, protein or anything. It's just a typical ice cream comes with a lot of sugar. I think it's like 60 grams per pint, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, sorry, 40, uh, no, 49 grams of sugar, added sugar per pint. Now, the catch with this one is that it's made with whey, but it is animal-free whey. Now, I thought this was one of the strangest things I had seen, and the product's put out there and it's it's on the front it's called powered by animal free way and the thing that confused me the most was i, I scoured this site and the and they said it's, it's all the benefits of whey the taste the texture like dairy milk but made without the cow and the only description i could find was that they've taken a, a guided by nature approach that uses plant sugars and some good old fashioned fermentation that's the only description i could find on this animal free way now as as weird as this ingredient is is we're gonna i mean obviously you can't break into the science because there's not much you can't really find much about it i'm curious is i think there's no way that this shouldn't already be in the supplement industry if i when i put that out there that was my intention that someone should be hitting these guys up and finding out how to get a milk-like vegan protein powder that way without the animal somehow 
I was just curious. You're you're a science man. Obviously, I think this should this needs to be in the industry. Why it hit ice cream first is beyond me. I um, know that's what I'm I'm trying to figure out when but ba- my question- when bacteria <laughs> ferment things. I don't think. Uh, my question to you is not necessarily, um, you know, like, firstly, is something like this, because again, the way they describe it, like, in a, a, a nature guided approach, um, you know, f- old fashioned fermentation, it seemed very like, magical to me. I was like, this is like a weird explanation. My question is, is it possible? Is this actually something that can't be done? And is it something that could be bought into supplements because I think if it could it's it's a gold it's it's a gold it's jackpot where they haven't because that's the one thing that's been like killing vegan proteins is that you can never get it to taste even if you can get it to taste good the texture will never be the same but if you can do that I mean like this should be on the this should be on the production line already but right. I was curious I is, mean, it, sh- is it is it actually scientifically possible, <laughs> or is this something that's going to come out and then there's going to be a, like you know? A whole I mean, what I'm trying to of- figure out. Okay, so like when the bacteria in our gut ferment uh, in the indigestible portion of carbohydrates, so the fiber, it turns it into butyrate. Okay, it, I, I'm not aware of a mechanism uh, by which bacteria can create amino acids. And like the, the byproducts of their fermentation of foods are amino acids that resemble a whey protein. I'm not aware of maybe it's it's possible, but I have never encountered anything like that. But it and, would like I didn't do too much digging into the company, but they sound like quite a like big, like brave robot. I remember reading something because it was on TechCrunch, is where I actually saw it. So I wasn't in the realm of looking for ice cream, but I found it there. Um and they talk about it being like some sort of upstart, some very interesting company. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is something that they've made themselves. So you're saying that you it could be done. You just haven't come across it before. I mean, or anything. I, I mean, I, I mean, the, the, a bacteria can produce a protein within itself to you know because it's going to need its own proteins to maintain cells. But I'm, I'm, how are you going to? How is a bacteria going to? ingest some kind of food particle ingest in, in terms of a bacteria the way it, you know it metabolizes things so how is a bacteria going to grab hold of something and then kick out something that is whey protein i i but don't understand more how that's possible um the i mean you could try and hit them up make, make, make a great interview i didn't do that i just put it out there i took it on face value like i said it's, they've got eight ice cream flavors animal free whey it's all over the front but again, I scoured their site, and that was really the only description I could get. Yeah, and I just I pulled it up too, and I'm like, maybe the the bacteria fermentation is uh, yielding a protein that mimics the amino acid composition of whey protein, and that's how they're getting away calling it whey protein. But that's I mean that's the thing nice. they've put it on their label as a whey, and it's just yeah. brackets animal free. Right. In the and ingredient, just, it is whey. It lists itself as whey, like even on the ingredient label. Um, it just says whey protein. The part where you have to be completely honest, that's where they've written right. whey. Yeah, I mean, I mean maybe, maybe, the story, some... maybe the story is more uh, intriguing, <laughs> more mysterious to you then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, if, if you can do that, that's pretty cool. I'm just, if they're using such a good whey protein, why are the macros on the tub so shitty? I mean, it's, it's 57 grams I think it's because they've gone... And, They've gone for that. It's kind of like organic, isn't it? It's kind of like, you know, we've made this thing organic ice cream, but people necessarily buy organic don't necessarily want clean macros. And I guess if you want your ice cream to be in the mainstream and you want it, you want it to taste damn good, 50 grams of sugar is going to do that. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, again, I'm, I'm coming across research right now just pulling up saying that bacteria can digest and ferment whey protein, but I'm not saying anything that it's producing whey protein. Well, okay, so okay. Next question is then. I mean, so, I'm if it I mean, can I think be done cool. on ice cream, if it could be done on ice cream, how much damage do you think it could do if it hit the supplement industry? If 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 we're talking just if if we can bring ingredients like that to, to I, I think mean, I think if we could do it, it would cream. be very cool. It would be awesome as an innovation. Um, I still think whey protein from cow milk is still probably going to be the leading source of whey protein in the tubs just from a cost and economic standpoint and a feasibility standpoint because oh, yeah, the infrastructure yeah. has already been there 
Um, but I mean, this could be a good way to give vegans a, a superior option because, you know, we know by and large that the bioavailability of plant proteins is nowhere near what it is for animal proteins. And they just released a study last week or this past week showing that so they've done studies comparing like pea protein to whey protein because pea protein is a whole protein source and you get similar results in terms of lean body mass accumulation. But this one actually looked at recovery markers and that even though pea protein is a whole protein source, um, whey protein still outperformed it on recovery. Like pea protein still helped recovery compared to placebo, but whey protein still beat pea protein on markers of recovery following, uh, you know, uh, damaging exercise. Um, so I think if, if you could find a vegan source that is comparable to whey, I think it, it's really good for the, the granola eaters out there. Um, and could it bring, could it help maybe pave the way for some better tasting vegan products? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's all ultimately going to boil down to, to cost. And I, I now I'm more, I just want to learn the science of this, <laughs> this, this fermentation, you know, the, how, how the hell are bacteria promoting or producing whey proteins? That's Look, man, I, I, I went through this site and that was that, that little line that was really the only thing I could find that describes yeah. it. And they, but they put animal free way all over the place, which I thought was such a weird, they said they, all they say is the benefits, taste texture of, of, uh, of way without the cat. They made it sound so simple. I just thought it was awesome. Cause I was, yeah. again, I was, that's the one thing that not necessarily the recovery, but I think mainstream people, mainstream people that go out and buy a protein powder, I would have vegan protein if it tastes good. I don't give two shits if it's going to like enhance my recovery because, to be honest, I, I think there are a lot of other factors that help that. Um, I wouldn't swap it up completely, but right. as a nice mix-up, maybe in the morning or whatever, or a scoop, mm -hmm. half this, half that. I mean, if it's going to – yeah, that's that's I'm, I'm curious because taste is the one thing that drags plant proteins down. Even though you can yep. have the best-tasting vegan way, um, you know, it's still nowhere near the, the best way. Not even close. Would, yeah, you always put the caveat, it's great for a vegan protein. It's not great yeah, for protein powders. But if you can get rid of that graininess, I mean, shit. Uh, maybe yep. maybe we'll come back next week and you can answer some questions about how yeah, this I'm gonna, is. Yeah, I'm going to send them an email to try and figure <laughs> out. Yeah, because everything I've seen is that the, the gut bacteria, just bacteria in general, it's all short-chain fatty acids, butyrate, acetate, propionate, lactate, succinate, and formate. I don't see anything about how it's going to generate. Uh... They did mention, I saw in a press release, they were talking about, um, was, again, on TechCrunch, it was where I saw the big story was they were, you know, they were basically had this thing and they were just trying to find the best space to use it. Like they made it sound like it was kind of their proprietary thing. And they were just sort of like, you know, where would this benefit the most? The other question I was wondering was, is it possible that this cannot be made into powder form? Is That's it an ice cream? Point. Is it an ice cream because it can only be used in like frozen format? Is that even? I'm not too big on the science. I was curious because again, I couldn't find too much on their site. Um, but I would have thought that if it could be frozen, it yeah. it could be turned into powder. I mean, either way, either way, that's a. Uh, the, the, you got some homework, I guess, for the next week. Then. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm gonna keep looking. Okay, so the last story I have is obviously for TJ, and this is. TJ's opinion, obviously labels are labels. We, 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 we've heard this a billion times. It's probably a hashtag. Um, what's your thoughts on the new devastate of the union? I mean, the, the formula to me looks pretty damn solid. I thought it was an awesome return for Inspired. Like over the years, they have become more popular. And with obviously popularity comes uh, a little, not necessarily mainstream, but like a little less intensity, a little less edginess. Since White Cut, they've even Black Diamond Reserve, they've kind of toned it down, even to the point where they did Worldwide, which was designed primarily to be a worldwide compliant mainstream product. Right. Whereas this one is like, this just brings you all the way back to what it made them. So, I mean, you got all the stems there. You got area, you got, you got ISO, you got, I mean, it's a, it, it, you got the two year, I mean, it's, it's pretty intense. Um, right. what, what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think, you know, there's uh, one, Landon on uh, Fermento is a brilliant mm. formulator. So I I think, generally speaking, when he touches something, it's uh, it turns out well. And uh, so I, I think that's how I would start. 
You know, I don't get impressed by a long list of stuff. I have to tell you, like yeah. I usually, I usually get the uh, opposite um, like impact in my head when I see like a long ass list of things that I'm not necessarily like saying, "Oh my god, this is going to blow my head off," because there's so many things there, and getting it right is is going to be relatively hard. I like what I've seen that there seems to be like a lot of stuff around focus and mood, so I have a lot of expectation there around focus and mood. From, from the label perspective, I think that it's just it's a good example of innovation because there's a lot of things there that I've seen for the first time. I think some of them are sort of, I don't know where they found them, where Landon found them even, but uh, there's a couple of things there, combinations, the combos that uh, I don't uh, know where he brought them from. Like sort of, I don't know if it's his thing or... I think that, that R3 Tonic, someone mentioned yeah, that to me. R3 Tonic, right. I yeah. suspect that to be theirs because I know that I mean, Glaxon has their. Don't they have? Does Glaxon have their uh, choline yeah. thing? Everybody have, has their own thing. It doesn't mean yeah. anything, though, right? Like I can. It's just. Uh, I don't know, but I think it's theirs. I, I I would say this. Landon knows what he's doing usually, but the <laughs> a long list a long list of stuff doesn't necessarily means that it's good. But a long actually, list of Landon. a long list of Landon would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and um, but. I think generally speaking, we'll need to, uh, you know, labels are still just labels. I just Googled it. It's true. It's still true. So I, I'm, I mean, it's okay. I, I mean, labels you are good for the shock effect. You're, you're uh, like me. You want, to, you want to try it before? Yeah. I want to see how it yeah. feels. It's very hard, extremely hard to differentiate. Extremely hard. Extremely hard. It is now, I, I think we're at the point where it's 99% branding. And uh, and one percent differentiate. It's really hard to find a formula that would make you feel. I'm talking legal formulas, right? Yeah. Like stuff that uh, when when you actually know what's in it, it's it's really hard to create a new feeling. Extremely hard. Extremely hard. I I so we'll see. We'll see. I, labels are just labels. We'll see what happens. I think the stem. I like the thing. design, though. The design is, oh, yeah. is impressive. The design is yeah. uh, speaking of branding, right? The design is amazing. It's like I'd like the tub above my bed. It looks amazing. It looks like it's just like a put it there, picture. But yeah. <laughs> it looks it's better a, than what I have above my bed. <laughs> it's a uh, yeah. They, I think they did their BBD thing. I don't know if you've seen the the Devastate BBD with the giant wolf on the. Yeah, it's pretty much awesome. Yeah. yeah, that one's not bad, but this one I'm kind of. I'm a, I'm I'm a little more intrigued to try. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about just from like the aesthetics point of view, the label. Yeah. I, mean, I don't really get get all giddy about label designs and stuff, but those two looked looked really really good. Really nice. Really it's nice. It was a, it's an odd one. Just the again the big wolf out of left field, exclusive to Australia as well. Yep. Don't know why. Don't know why. I think yeah, I've I've tried it. It's not bad. Um, but uh, I wouldn't. It's not the best devastate, obviously. But um, I am a little more intrigued by this one. Uh, yeah. It's. Uh, I think what they say coming out mid next month, so we've got three, four weeks to wait. Cool. All right, gentlemen. And uh, closing, I pulled up some stuff, Shane. It's something called recombinant Ooh. protein production, where you you basically get a bunch of bacteria. They produce large quantities of proteins, and you have to modify gene sequences. <coughs> And from these proteins to create a product. So, it, I mean, this, people are scared about GMOs. This seems like the definition of what the fuck a GMO <laughs> is. So I'm, I'm going to dig more into the science because I don't want to speak out of my ass on this. But this this looks like the the, the pathway or the, the method they could be using to create this. So I'll do some homework and we'll we'll, re we'll re uh, visit this topic next week. Reach out to them. I would, I would, yeah. I, I would, yeah. love, I would love to, again, I just feel like if it's something – it's just, it feels like one of those things that if it's good, a good price point and it's, I mean, the vegan protein market has grown a lot and now it's kind of, you know, it's the same things kind of over and over again, just in terms of taste. Yeah. But if, if someone popped up on the map of this, I mean, shit, you could actually legitimately say, you know, a vegan protein that tastes like whey, which is not something anybody has said uh, or confident enough to say. So, say, so yeah, I would be. I think it would be a, it's a no brainer almost if possible. If yeah. possible, yeah. Awesome, man. All right, gentlemen. 
Well, that brings us to the end of another uh, fantastic week's recording. Have a great rest of the weekend. And uh, is everybody going to be tuning in for the UFC fight night tonight? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. What's I'll the prediction? What are the predictions? The sports thing. <laughs> Shane, uh, who's, who's going to win? I, I'm, I'm horrible with pronouncing the names, but yep. I have DC, DC by knockout. I really? Have, yep. Hey, man, uh, I, I came off a $1,000 win in the last UFC. So I'm going all out on this one and going to be doing pretty much What's that? You still gambling? I'm, I don't gamble too much money. I gamble UFC only pretty much uh, and <laughs> NFL when it comes around. But uh, I'm probably going to put a, a 100 down on DC knockout. Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, Sean O'Malley by knockout. I have him by knockout as well. I feel like that's a, that's almost a given. And I can't remember the other fight. Is it the... Um, the Santos Yes, Junior Defender. I think he's going to lose by knockout. So uh, I, I, I feel, I, I feel <laughs> like old prediction, Shane. Man, we're we're going to ex, we're going to yeah. put this out there, and we're going to release it uh, Tuesday when the rest of the podcast safety predictions. Are right. they going to come back and Rob is going to be laughing at me? Or no, 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 not at all. I actually with Dos Santos because I'm a huge fan, but he comes off a loss and he Russell. Does? Too. Yeah, the other guy also got the, they actually got knocked out by the same guy in the first I round. Say, I mean. He he lost to to Francis, but I mean everybody's losing to Francis. So. But they both lost to uh, to Francis and Gano, both of yeah, them. Yeah, I don't know, but but then Junior just I don't know. Is it he? He's been around for a while, has he not? I, I think that he just lost that fire because in the last couple of fights he's just not the same. And yeah, I think so once, yeah. yeah, once you lose that fire, it's very very hard to come back. Uh, with the Sean O'Malley, I mean he should win because he's just been and it seems you like they. That? They protecting him and they they trying to get him to the title shot. So I feel like he's gonna win. In a, in a you don't think DC is gonna win. I I didn't think until yesterday. I'll tell you why because I've never seen Miocic in a better shape, and he beat the living piss out of DC in the last fight. But this is the lightest DC's been as a heavyweight in a long long time, and I know he's retiring after the fight. So oh, yeah. That, see? Yeah, that's, so that's what I'm banking on. So that's the reason why I, I think he's going to be super motivated. I, I'm not convinced because, like I said, he got beaten up pretty badly by Miocic. The first fight, he actually just kind of like, it was it was a good punch, but it was just a one-punch knockout. In the second fight, he lost pretty bad. I mean, he got beaten pretty bad. In this one, I thought that Miocic is going to win until I found out that DC is he's really in phenomenal shape. He's like, I think, 240s which he's never been this light for a heavyweight fight. Well, and my bet is my bet's going to be on all three of them doing that. So if one of them doesn't do what I say, I just lose altogether, but I'm banking on it. Well, yeah, let, let, let's see. It's going to be it's definitely going to be interesting. Definitely. Oh, yeah. You know, Robert, uh, I, I wanted to ask you what about the Barcelona game or you don't want to talk about it? Oh, no, no, no. I was totally okay with it. I wanted them to lose after I saw the beginning of the game. I actually predicted they're going to lose. Because like, uh, ah, they were, they didn't lose. They were raped. <laughs> yeah, but but you know what? It's actually it's funny because they had the uh, the last couple of games that they had against Bayern. They lost uh, about five years ago, I think seven one, and in this one they lost eight two. And in between, they've been beating Bayern. But like I said, this was a terrible, terrible, terrible season for them. And you know, c- changing coaches every six months. And the shit that they're doing is just absolutely ridiculous. Look, I mean, the fact remains is that the Germans, and specifically Bayern, they were never the most technical team. They were never the best, like, you know, in terms of performance. And they don't really have, like, major stars, but they play as a team. And they were absolutely phenomenal yesterday. Like I said, I hope they're going to win the whole thing because, you know, sometimes in soccer, a, a bad team can win. And I didn't yeah. want I didn't want Barcelona to win because I'm not one of those guys, you know. Like I have a team, I'm a fan of a team, and I hate everybody else. They yesterday went the first. Like, I am. Yeah, you are now. I I don't ha- I don't <laughs> hate other teams, but Bayern that's was, what makes it fun. But, uh, Munich was so good yesterday. It was so, it was just beautiful to watch them. Like every game, even that Barcelona, even when they lose, they still win the possession. They always have the ball. And yesterday they were so outclassed, they lost the actual possession, which was it was just shocking. 
But at the same time, like you know, it is what it is, and I, I absolutely was okay with the with the fact that Bayern won, and I hope that they won the whole thing because the team was just like that was probably the best performance of a team that I've seen in a long time. The only thing that reminded me was when Germany beat Brazil seven seven one, I think, at the World <laughs> Cup. That was that was beautiful. I mean, they 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 were phenomenal. What do you think of Mike Tyson coming back? I'm going to watch it. it. I'm going to watch it, it too. It, no, it depends. It depends. I need to, it's, it's kind of like, you know, a bodybuilder, like when you see a bodybuilder on stage, like in real life, and then you see him next to like a really, really good bodybuilder and you're like, oh shit, that guy wasn't actually that good. I need to, I, I need to see, I, I don't know if I'm going to risk paying what's likely to be 40 bucks for a pay-per-view if I don't actually get to see, I don't want to play what be tuna for the pay-per-view. And he's just like actually really slow, and I'm watching like some sort of second grade match. I know his his promo videos look really cool. Well, you know that they actually they postponed the fight. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, apparently, I mean, he looks at least on video, he looks in absolutely phenomenal shape. I mean, he just looks just as fast. I mean, as just devastating, just as powerful. But from what I understand, Roy Jones is not ready, so they decided to push it to November. Yeah, I'm just worried about investing that money and it turning out to be like I don't know. It's kinda of like when you watch an like agreement. Two, it's kinda of like when you watch like two really, really, really heavy heavyweights and you're like, this is gonna be awesome. And then you see them like just punching so slow and gassing themselves out. And I'm like, this is not what I wanted to watch. This looks like it just it's not a fight. I well, I, I, and, and you know what? We, we, we actually, you know, I, I know we're wrapping up, but the thing is, is like we, we just said about like the labels in terms of like the label design. Like we talked about uh, Devastate of the Union, I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, the label is absolutely, I mean, it, some people will love it. Some people will hate it. I understand that because it's such a just next level. It's very, very creative. And, you know, some people go just for the marketing of it. You know, we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of brands lately that shifting from maybe a hardcore to more of a marketing. We've seen that with ProSubs. When ProSubs came out, they were just amazing. I mean, that was probably, uh, I think, Jekyll or Hyde, Hyde, I think. That was probably the best, considered the best pre-workout. And then they changed the formula. They changed the label. They looked better, but they were not, they lost some of the hardcore following because they kind of tried to go for more mainstream. So that's the reason I think that uh, when I personally saw Devastator of the Union, when I saw the label and um, I, the, the original heiress that, uh, you know, DJ made popular, mm. it was really a phenomenal pre-workout. It was just like one of the best pre-workouts on the market easily, specifically, again, uh, for, for, for my market, you know, like assassin market and, and those like it was such a it, it was a great pre-workout. But then the following few versions they got a lot of criticism because it wasn't as powerful. I'm not saying it was worse. It just wasn't as powerful and not as strong as the original one. I mean, clearly, because Landon is very, very good formulator. I think he was going for a different market, maybe for a little bit broader and more mainstream market. So it was still good. But some of that original following, they were disappointed. So the same thing with, uh, you know, with, with fighters and with boxing and, and, you know, sports in general. You remember the McGregor fight against Mayweather. I mean, anyone who understands even slightly. Yeah, any, yeah, yeah. Any, anyone who understands even slightly about boxing, slightly. You don't have to be a fucking expert. You don't have to be a fucking trainer or a fighter or anything like that. Everybody knew that Mayweather would just whoop his ass. I mean, it, it's not even up for discussion, you know, as to what's going to happen. But the marketing machine was so powerful that they made over $100 million each just based on hype, just based on... We all knew that that's going to be probably one of the easiest boxing matches for Mayweather, and he probably doesn't even need to train for it. He probably can get up at, at 3 a.m. in the morning and just go and fucking destroy it destroy McGregor. We all know about it. But then they did such a phenomenal job. I remember going to my barber and I'm sitting in a chair and he knew that, uh, you know, I fought and he likes to talk to me uh, with me about fights. And he goes to me, bro, McGregor is going to kill Mayweather. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He goes to me, I got my money. He says on, uh, on McGregor, McGregor is going to kill him. I'm like, listen, I'm a huge McGregor fan. I think he's an amazing fighter. I said, you realize that this is boxing. He's going to get killed. 
And the fact remains is, is that Mayweather finished the fight whenever he wanted to finish the fight. He was just dragging on for marketing purposes. We all paid. I paid gladly, even though I knew the outcome. I, I paid a, I, <laughs> I, I, I paid $100 because the marketing machine, the, oh, the, the hype, the everything, the rush was so intense. They, you know, it, it's all at the end of out marketing. And then, you know, even if it's predictable, I remember that after the fight, I went back, uh, you know, to the barber like two weeks later. He goes to me, can you believe it? McGregor lost. <laughs> I'm like, really? You know, I mean, wh wh what's next? You're going to put him against in a dancing competition and expect him to beat a dancer. Everything comes to marketing. Everything comes to basically ability to sell. And I think some people are very, very good at it. And, uh, you know, the same thing with Tyson and Roy Jones. They both phenomenal. Two of all-time greats. Yes, they, you know, passed the age of 50, passed the prime, passed everything. But that's probably going to be one of the best-selling events ever just because of marketing. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. If, it, if it's cheap, it's 20 bucks. I, 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 I think they said about $50, $60, something. Yeah, I don't know like if I'm going to pay 50 bucks to see that. <laughs> I, 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 I think something like that. I'm worried that turn it on is going to be like just not not what I want it to be. Oh yeah, you, you can tell me because if it is fire, then they'll probably do another one. So you can tell me how it is. Uh, probably. Well, that was a nice. Sport All thing, right, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your time. Well, I'm sure we'll be all texting each other during the, uh, the fight night tonight. Well, except TJ, we don't piss him off because it's after five o'clock, so we don't we don't, we don't correspond with TJ. After five, that. after five o'clock, TJ is so angry that he can probably knock out all of them. Put 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 some money down. Make you excited. I guarantee you, it's a lot more fun. All right, guys, we will reconvene Sorry. next week. Thank you for your time, and uh, have a good Bye, one. Guys. Uh, have a good weekend. Yes.